This is Danny Flexen here for Deccans Out. Delighted to be joined once again by top US promoter, Dimitri Salita. Dimitri, how are you? I'm doing good. And you? I'm very good. Thank you. Um, looking at some uh, tweets recently, and you came up, obviously we follow you uh, as a channel, and Oscar De La Hoya put out kind of a, a plea to his fellow promoters about sitting down on a proposed round table discussion with the emphasis on making some of the best fights cross-promotionally, of course. Um, and you were one of the names uh, tagged in, along with, uh, I've got to say, esteemed company in Eddie Hearn, Al Heyman, Bob Arum. Um, so before we get into the kind of the crux of the issue, how, I don't mean to sound patronising, but how honoured were you to be included in that company, first of all? Very honest. a great compliment. And Oscar uh, is one of my favourite fighters <clears throat> of all time, somebody that I look, looked up to. Uh, coming up, and it's really pretty incredible that he mentioned me amongst that elite group. The interesting thing is that I'm the only guy in that uh, in that roster of elite promoters that does not have a TV deal. So everything I've done, we've worked on from scratch. We've developed uh, talent and developed fighters from zero to world titles to world champions, and we did that without having a TV deal. So now in, a, in the changing boxing landscape uh, here in the United States, I really believe um, uh, and working towards getting a deal. And I really believe that that will change uh, my business model and will improve boxing in the United States to a great extent because we deliver great events, we deliver great fights, and we work with everybody. We are for being inclusive, not being exclusive. And one of the great things about that tweet, uh, and hopefully it comes to fruition, it becomes material, is that people from different platforms that are associated with different uh, bodies are able, different networks, different platforms uh, are coming together to discuss these fights. And I'm definitely on board and I believe that that's the way to do it on the televised events that we've had and we've had some on The Zone and, and on Showtime. Uh, you know, we always reach out and work with different promoters uh, to make sure that we get the best fights for the fans and the best fights for the fighters. Because the fighters' careers are finite and they need to, to cash in uh, and uh, challenge themselves to the best of their abilities in that particular time and promoter beef is not good for the sport of boxing. It's not good for the fighters. Uh, and uh, now that the sport is changing in such a way, I believe that, that that's that's the necessary next step. Hold on one second. So as we can see, you responded quickly and enthusiastically to Oscar's proposal. Do you expect to see a similar response from uh, Heyman and Hearn and Aram? Well, everybody was tagged. Al Heyman, I believe, not, at least does not have a public uh, Twitter account. So, so uh, I'm not sure if he'll respond. Maybe he'll respond in action, but not on a tweet. Um, I certainly hope so. I hope that uh, that Eddie, who is obviously always very vocal and uh, uh, and uh, does a lot of his business on social media, so I do hope that he chimes in and and uh, says his words. And we and throughout the years, we did a lot of business with Eddie Hearn. And uh, actually, his first shows in the United States before the zone on HBO. We co promoted those two shows in, in, in New York City, and uh, he just came to Detroit. So we were involved with Jermaine Franklin and some other fighters, fighters on the undercard. So, you know, it's important. It's important, I believe, to always have a uh, an avenue of conversation and always have a way for, for promoters, even when they have some beef and people, you know, like. The great Mickey Duff used to say, "There are no permanent uh, enemies in boxing, and there are no permanent there are no permanent friends, and there are no permanent enemies." So, <laughs> so you always have to find a way to make the fights. And you know, I'm a boxing historian. I love the sport of boxing. Back in the day, when Don King and Bob Arum beefed, uh, when they, when there was a fight to be made, they made the fight. And I feel that it's very important uh, these days for the sport to grow. With Showtime, you know, stepping out, and HBO stepped out a couple of years ago. It's so important that the big fights get made. People say, why is the UFC uh, so big? People say, you know, just like regular people say, UFC is taking over boxing. It isn't, but it does seem that way because UFC is unified. And th the fights that Dana White talks about get made. And that's very important. A lot of times different promoters talk about fights being made. And and I, I feel like, you know, that... that uh, knowing that it may be impossible. But if we can create a forum where conversation can take place either privately or publicly, 
that uh, and 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 people can have an intent and have some kind of a reward system to make these fights. I really believe that it would benefit the sport of boxing and um, and uh, and the fighters and the fans. And the other thing that 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 I feel is very important is very important for the people on top. Because leaders send, set the trend for the sport, and it's very important for you know for the for the few promoters that have these network deals that are kind of the driving force of the boxing industry to to set the tone for what boxing should be, to give back to the boxing community, to enrich and encourage amateur boxing, to enrich and encourage uh, smaller fighters, smaller fight promoters, and smaller fight cards. It's so important. Uh, and that's what, what what will make the sport grow. And was this conversation that, that you guys had on Twitter, was it carried on offline, at least between yourself and Oscar? Well, some people reached out to me. Uh, I did speak with some people from Oscar's office about setting up something official. And uh, I tweeted uh, Ariel Helwani to, to, mm -hmm. to host it. Uh, you know, Ariel, Ariel uh, while boxing is not his specialty per se, but he's obviously a guy in combat sports and nobody talks knows what he's talking about. But he has a huge reach, and I really believe that the uh, combat sports is shifting. And we see uh, and Ghana versus Tyson Fury, uh, Mayweather versus McGregor. You know, those are great events, and it feels like influencer boxing, but it's not really influencer boxing. I feel like influencer boxing came off that, but these are two different things because McGregor. He's one of the greatest UFC fighters ever. And Gano, one of the best uh, heavyweights in UFC history. So even though they're not boxers, they're still elite athletes and they're elite fighters. And uh, from experience, it's very difficult for a boxer to fight a, to fight a physically strong fighter. And we saw both guys struggle uh, at some point. With, and, you know, obviously Mayweather and Tyson Fury, you know, some of the greatest of all time, struggle with these elite fighters. So... Um, with that being said, someone like Ariel, who has a voice into the MMA fans, will be will be uh, a good guy to host this. And you said earlier you were the only one involved in that tweet or that invitation that doesn't have a TV deal. What are you hearing then about Al Heyman and PBC, given the Showtime are pulling out of the sport? Well, you know, read over the last couple of weeks about uh, Amazon Prime mm. and last week, uh, the Wall Street Journal an article about Netflix getting into the sport of boxing, getting into live sports, I believe that would be tremendous. And certainly Amazon and Netflix has a, you know, has so many different programs that tell stories. I really believe that, that, uh, you know, we shifted a little bit into social media, into relying on social media to the fighters. And many times networks say, well, what's this guy's social media following in, a, in their decision, if they will put a fighter on or not. Uh, yeah. And I believe that, uh, uh, with a network deal, whoever is the platform that has to be with the promoter and with that particular broadcaster needs to be made uh, a deal where where uh, shoulder program and where stories can be told in a high quality way where where boxing fans will digest it and not only boxing fans where regular people will will connect to it and certainly in its heyday HBO was the best and Showtime did a great job as well and now with these two giants exiting the sport we need to uh, uh make sure that that uh, something significant uh, comes into that in, into that space uh to to make the sport grow bigger and wider and i really believe that boxing is one of the greatest sports uh and uh with the right ingredients uh, can really uh you know uh grow to be a mainstream sport here in the united states it's mainstream once in a while but it's not really mainstream uh, like it should be and like it could be and just finally, if this summit, if you like, of boxing power brokers does uh, come to fruition, what which fights specifically would you like to see it help create, whether that's involving your stable or the other promoters? Well, I, well so first for my stable, I have Shoji Khan Ergashev fighting Sabio Matias November 25th. Ergashev uh, is promoted by me. Sabio Matias is promoted by PBC. Um, so uh, uh, again, talking about inclusiveness and having the ability to work with different promoters. I would like for Ergashev to fight the winner of Regis Pro Progre or the winner of the fight, I believe, which I believe will be Ergashev to fight the winner of Progre versus Haney. I believe that would be a great fight. I would love to make um, 
Gerard Miller versus Anthony Joshua. Mm -hmm. I know that I know that that uh, we'll get a lot of uh, we'll get some comments uh, both ways. But this is, it is a fight that 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 people are interested in. I'd like to get Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. Mm -hmm. Tyson Fury versus Usyk. Uh, I mean, and there's an array of fights that can happen. You know, across the board. Uh, you know, when I was when I was uh, replying to that tweet, I was thinking to myself like, maybe even include uh, Pete Murray and Dana White. <laughs> I know, I know that they're on on, on different specters of the MMA world, but uh, uh, certainly, you know, to have a conversation just about boxing, about doing some mixed fights, Clarissa and Chris Cyborg would be a great fight, mm -hmm. uh, a great event, uh, maybe the first uh, of such mixed fights. Uh, in the combat sport culture of two elite fighters that are at the peak of their careers um, and big names. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. And certainly, even if nothing happens, I believe that it's healthy because the media is going to pick up on it. And hopefully the trend will go in that direction. That we want to work together. They want to make the biggest and the best fights. And most importantly, we want the fans to enjoy the sport of boxing, to tune in, to, tune in, to talk about it, to uh, follow different fighters on their social media, and to really live the sport of boxing. And for that to happen, the more together the different brokers can work, the better it is for the sport. The better it is for everybody. Well, fingers crossed it will come to fruition in that case. Dimitri, really appreciate your time as always. And um, yeah, let's hope there's an update on this in the next week or two and we can talk about that. I'm, I'm with you. Thank you.